Hey guys, welcome to another video in a day in a life of a social worker. So due to HIPAA and since I work in a hospital, can't really show you guys too much, but we can have some discussions. So February's video is common careers in social work. So I have notes and stuff so that way I can stay on track because I don't want these videos to be all over the place, right? That's not what we're here for. So let's talk about common careers in social work. So if you see me looking down, it's because I'm looking at my notes so I don't miss anything. So different types of careers that a social worker can have. You can be a clinical social work, which many people actually do clinical work. Psychiatric social worker, child and family social worker, like people who work for in Connecticut, it's DCF, Department of Children's Family. Other states call it CPS, Child Protective Service social and human service assistant and those are usually the ones where like a bachelor's level degree or what i learned the other day i believe it's the state of north carolina i think someone actually posted because i'm in like a social work group that they were they were a social work um service assistant but what it is is that they actually have their licensed master social work but they did not take the clinical test so they're not a licensed clinician yet which we can do another video on that too. Healthcare social worker, which is me. I am a hospital social worker. Mental health, substance abuse social worker, a school social worker, community social worker, community health workers and administrations. And those are a lot of times people who also like healthcare administrators. A lot of times in a nursing home, it is a social worker who is like the administrator in a nursing home. Uh, let's go social and community service managers, group social work, health educator, public policy social work, administrative social work, research social work, research assistant, environmental health workers and administrators, healthcare administrators and public health administrators. So now let's go into the top 10 reasons why you should pursue a career in social work. Um, be ready to work hard and be ready for stress. But all jokes aside, you like working with people, then this is a job for you. If you like to talk to people, you like to in interact with people, go ahead and go be a social worker. Social workers are most always interested in helping people either individually or on a big picture level, right? You or a loved one have been helped by a social worker in the past, so you became interested in doing the work. You or a loved one have experienced a hardship such as addiction or abuse, and you would like to help others overcome similar challenges. Which when I actually did one of my internship in a substance abuse slash mental health um, agency, one of the workers was actually um, a recovered alcoholic and, and gambler. And that because, you know, he now he is, I want to say 25 years, 30 years sober, he decided to become a social worker so he can help others that are dealing with addiction and gambling issues. You have an interest in a field commonly addressed by social work, such as poverty, mental health, or community organizing. You would like to work in a certain environment, such as a hospital or a school, but you are more interested in providing clinical or case management services than healthcare or education. For example, in a hospital, we do a little bit of clinical and case management work, right? Because we are assisting with, again, I have a video that talks about all different types of consults that we get, but you are also assisting with the discharge plan because a lot of times they cannot be, they might be medically clear, but then they're not socially cleared. So you would like to work, hold on, did I read that already? Oh, you have a strong interest in working with certain populations such as children, the mentally ill or older adults. You enjoy volunteer work, making a difference, and are interested in extending your passion into a career in nonprofit management, program development, or direct social services. Talked about the directors. You enjoy working in a fast-paced environment, addressing crisis situation while managing a large number of tasks. Now, in a hospital, you are definitely a crisis intervention social worker because there are times we come in, especially in our hospital, we do something called on-call hours, meaning that you work your regular 8 to 4.30. You are on-call from 5 p.m. to 8 a.m. 
anything that happens between those hours, meaning sexual assault, domestic violence, child abuse, child um, sexual um, child abuse, um, you have to come in to have to pretty much deal with that. So uh, we don't come in for like substance abuse, homelessness. No, there's no resources after a certain time. And then for DV, sometimes if you're coming in at, if you're getting paid at two, three o'clock in the morning and the patient does not have a safe place to go, then they can wait till the morning and that the emergency room social worker can assess them then. Because if they do not have a safe place to go, we're not going to discharge them in the hospital at two, three o'clock in the morning, right? So... <clears throat> You are interested in a flexible career in an ever-changing field, allowing you to work in different settings, each with their own goals and challenges. That is true, but with a shared purpose of serving the common good. You want to have a career focused on helping people and making the world a better place. I mean, isn't that why we go into social work? There is such a great need in social work. We all know social work is one of the largest careers that is constantly growing. There is a need. As long as you have poverty, mental health, substance abuse, child abuse, sexual assault, DV, an issue, a concern, you need a social worker. You really, really do. Okay, so we can go into job description or I'm trying to think, where do I wanna go? Let's talk about people we serve. Children, older adults, people with disabilities, Patients with chronic acute or terminal diagnosis, people coping with grief or loss, people with mental illness, people struggling with addiction. I get all of that in the hospital setting. In a hospital setting, literally, you're going from infant, zero, straight to elderly, geriatric. I mean, there is nothing when you work in a hospital that you do not do. In a way, that's why I like about being in a hospital because I am exposed to everything. Like, I know I wanted to be in a hospital because I like the in and out. I don't like to do the same thing over and over, seeing patients weekly. Even though there are times that we have um, length of stays, which is the patients who stay longer than 7 to 14 days due to they have some social issues, due to they need long-term insurance, especially our older population. A lot of times they need a secondary insurance, a long-term insurance to pay for them to go into some type of facility. So then that keeps them in the hospital a little longer. Another thing that keeps a patient in the hospital due to they need to be conserved. Now they no longer have capacity. They cannot make their own decisions. So if there is no family involved, then we have to conserve them and have, find an attorney and that attorney um becomes their conservator person in a state and makes decisions for them in order for us to be able to discharge them to a skilled nurse facility, right? So what else we can talk about? So we talked about the type of social workers. Let's start with, I'm going to focus on one, which is the clinical social workers. Clinical social workers are the largest groups of professional trained mental health providers in the U.S., providing over half of all counseling and therapy services. These social workers diagnose and treat mental health conditions such as depression, anxiety, and substance use disorders. They provide individual and family therapy, couple counseling, and group treatment. They also counsel clients to develop new ways of thinking, changing behaviors, and cope with challenging situations. We do that all the time. <laughs> this is all the time. There's not a day that I come to work, and this is why I say in the hospital, you are part case management and part clinical, right? In the hospital, we collaborate with the doctors, other um, interdisciplinary teams, meaning like the psychiatrist, if there is one involved in that particular patient, um, a care coordinator, a the nurse, again, and then you're constantly reaching out and talking to either the patient or family or any other support networks that they have. Some people have home care agencies involved, so then you're also talking to the home care agencies. So there is a lot of collaboration that is going on in the hospital. Clinical social workers, definitely. Um, again, so besides direct therapeutic support, clinical social workers connect clients to community resource, which is one of the biggest things that we do. Because we don't follow clients, we are constantly giving them resources. So then as a hospital social worker, you have to keep up with 
resources. You have to know what's up to date. What is what was available and is no longer available. We all know come a new year, sometimes things change. That agency, maybe they didn't get the funding. So you have to constantly keep up with community resources so that you'll be able to help serve your clients. And service such as support groups, resources for basic needs and wellness activities. Um, again, clinical social workers. Majority of us are employed in some type of hospital settings, right? Um, community mental health agencies. What else I wanted to talk about? So a social worker at a clinical level is definitely, it's a social worker who is considered clinical is definitely required to have a master's degree. And you have licensed master social worker, which is someone who graduated, took a test and is able to work and call themselves a social worker. Then you work two years and you have supervised, supervised hours that you need to complete in order to apply for the clinical exam, right? Which now, once you take that exam and pass, you become a licensed clinical social worker. So right now, I'm, I'm a licensed master social worker, and I'm in the process of studying for my exam to become a licensed clinical social worker. Once I do that, then that's pretty much where my education and certificate stops for social work. I'm not going for a PhD. This is kind of where this is it for me, <laughs> unless I change careers in a couple years, but this is pretty much the final step for me. So one more social work we're going to talk about. I talked about clinical social work. Let's talk about the psychiatric social worker. They assess patients social, emotional, interpersonal, economic, and environmental needs, along with their strengths to develop an effective treatment plan. Social workers support patients suffering from psychiatric illness to manage family relationships, employment, and other affected part of their lives using individual counseling, group therapy, and family therapy. They connect psychiatric patients to hospitals. In a hospital, we do have a psych, um, we have Jerry psych and we have regular psych. So, and the social workers do work. So we have patients that could come up, like I'm a med search social worker. So I have patients that could come up on my med search floor and they get admitted to go into either Jerry psych or the psych floor. And then they have another social worker, the psych social worker, who now works with them um, to come up with the safest plan as possible, right? So that's one aspect. And then we can talk, I'm just looking at my time, and we can talk about one more, the child and family social worker. We work with a lot of DCF workers because, again, in a hospital, child abuse um, is always on a high, is, is a rise, it's always on a high rise thing, right? Um, so child and family social workers provide a wide range of case management service to support children by improving the functioning of their families and or engaging support and supervision outside the families. Common service provided by child and family social workers for parents and families include job placement, medical assistance, debt counseling, addiction treatment, family therapy, and financial support. They also manage um, adoptions seek supervised foster care services and placement in residential treatment. So we work a lot with our department children and families because we have a maternal child floor. And you all know there's always issues. There's moms who are substance abuse. There's moms who have mental health. There are mothers who does not have capacity. There are mothers who does not have support, homeless mothers. I mean, whatever reason that um, we contact Department of Children and families, and also remember, social workers, no matter, first of all, all hospital employees, employees are a mandated reporter, and a social worker, you are definitely a mandated reporter. So if you have a mother that comes in positive for heroin, cocaine, marijuana, and the baby is also positive, then you that is the automatically DCF referral. And then DCF takes over, they come in, they start to meet and work with that mother to come up with the safest plan, the best plan for both, right? But this is all I have for you guys for now. Um, again, thank you for watching my video. And I will see you next month in a day in a life of a social worker, right? Very rewarding career.